join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. The story of modern communication is often told through the gleaming glass of smartphones, the sleek lines of wireless towers, and the voices that travel across oceans in an instant. Yet behind every convenience lies the often overlooked genius of inventors whose work reshaped the world. When one thinks of the invention of the cell phone, many minds jump immediately to corporate names like Motorola or to Martin Cooper, who famously made the first handheld mobile call in 1973. But what is rarely remembered, or sometimes deliberately forgotten, is that years before Cooper's public demonstration, an African-American inventor named Henry Thomas Sampson Jr. laid the crucial foundation that made wireless cellular communication possible. His pioneering invention, the gamma electric cell, opened the doorway for the creation of portable wireless technology. Without Sampson's breakthrough, the first mobile phones may never have been realized in the form we know them today. To understand the magnitude of this story, one must step into the hidden corridors of American history where black ingenuity was often buried beneath layers of systemic neglect, erasure, and stolen credit. This is the story of the black inventor who, long before the age of Apple and Samsung, created the technological spark that lit the way to the very first cell phone prototype. Henry Thomas Sampson Jr. was born in Jackson, Mississippi in 1934, into a segregated America that offered few opportunities for black children to dream beyond the strict boundaries of systemic inequality. Yet from an early age, he displayed a fascination with science and mechanics. His curiosity was nurtured by parents who, despite the limitations imposed by Jim Crow laws, encouraged him to pursue knowledge. Samson excelled academically, eventually enrolling at Purdue University, where he earned a degree in chemical engineering in 1956. For many black men of his generation, higher education was a nearly impossible hurdle, but Samson's perseverance carried him further. He went on to earn a master's degree in engineering from the University of California, Los Angeles, and ultimately completed a PhD in nuclear engineering at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign in 1967, becoming the first African-American in the United States to achieve such a distinction. While much of Samson's professional life was dedicated to the field of nuclear energy, it was his work with energy conversion and radiation that placed him on the road to revolutionizing communication. In 1971, Samson, alongside George H. Miley, co-invented a device called the gamma electric cell. This device had the ability to convert high-energy gamma radiation into usable electrical energy. Though the invention was originally designed for use in nuclear power generation and deep space exploration, it contained a principle far greater in its potential reach. It was the first technology that provided a way to harness electromagnetic radiation into a portable power source. The patent filed by Samson described an energy cell that did not depend on sunlight, heat, or mechanical movement but could produce power directly from radiation. In the grand narrative of technological development, this marked a turning point. Without this innovation, there would have been no practical way to create truly wireless communication systems that could sustain themselves without being tethered to fixed power sources. It is important to note that Samson never claimed to have built the first fully functional handheld mobile phone. However, his invention laid the technological foundation that others would later exploit and commercialize. By enabling the practical conversion of energy for portable systems, Samson essentially provided the building blocks upon which cellular communication networks could rest. Without the gamma electric cell, the dream of a phone untethered to wires, capable of transmitting signals across distances, would have been delayed by decades. In this sense, Samson's contribution can be viewed as the hidden prototype, the unseen first stage of the mobile revolution. The narrative of Martin Cooper making the first mobile call in 1973 has been retold countless times in history books, news articles, and corporate advertisements. Yet seldom do these accounts acknowledge that Cooper's achievement was not an isolated moment of genius, but the result of a long lineage of technological breakthroughs, many of which were pioneered by black inventors whose names history has erased. Samson's work is a glaring example. His patent predated the Motorola demonstration by two years, 
And though his invention was not directly marketed as a consumer cell phone, the conceptual leap from his radiation to electric conversion to mobile energy transmission was not far. This is why many historians and technology scholars today recognize Henry Sampson as one of the overlooked founding fathers of mobile communication. To understand why his contributions were buried, one must consider the historical context of black inventors in America. Throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, African-American inventors faced systemic barriers that prevented them from receiving recognition, funding, or protection for their innovations. Figures like Garrett Morgan, who invented the traffic light in Granville Woods, who developed numerous railway telecommunication devices, were often stripped of credit or had their work attributed to white inventors. Henry Sampson, though more academically credentialed than many before him, was not immune to this pattern. Working in government research institutions and corporate laboratories, his role was minimized in public narratives while white engineers and executives were elevated as the sole pioneers of mobile communication. What makes Sampson's story even more remarkable is that he did not stop at one invention. Throughout his career, he filed several patents in energy conversion, rocket propulsion, and nuclear reactor technology. He also became an advocate for black participation in science and engineering, mentoring young students, and pushing for greater inclusion in fields that had long excluded African Americans. His life demonstrates that the struggle for recognition is not just about the celebration of one invention, but about acknowledging the centuries of contributions made by black minds that have fueled global progress. There is a deeper irony in the way Samson's name has been nearly erased from the mainstream history of the cell phone. In today's world, mobile phones have become more than tools of communication. They are lifelines, status symbols, and even political weapons. Movements such as Black Lives Matter were able to capture global attention largely because ordinary people had cell phones capable of recording injustice in real time. Yet the very technology that gave a voice to the oppressed around the world owes its roots to a black inventor whose own voice was silenced in the historical record. This erasure mirrors the larger pattern of how black contributions to science, culture, and politics are systematically obscured, even as the world continues to benefit from them. Some skeptics argue that Henry Sampson did not invent the cell phone in the literal sense, pointing instead to Motorola's engineers. This is technically true if one defines invention strictly as the assembly of a commercial consumer product. But to frame the story this way is to miss the larger point about innovation. Every technological leap is built upon a chain of earlier breakthroughs, and Samson's gamma electric cell is one of the crucial links in that chain. To dismiss his role is to suggest that the raw energy required to make mobile phones portable appeared out of thin air. In reality, Samson's discovery was the missing piece that made later inventions possible. By the time of his passing in 2015, Henry Samson had accumulated a career filled with accomplishments, honors, and recognition within scientific circles, though his name still remained largely absent from popular narratives about cell phones. Today, there is a growing movement to restore his legacy, not only to give credit where it is due, but also to inspire future generations of black inventors who continue to fight for recognition in a world where systemic barriers still persist. Samson's life is proof that genius cannot be bound by race, though history often tries to conceal it. The story of the black inventor who created the first cell phone prototype is, in many ways, the story of America itself, an America that has always thrived on the ingenuity of its black citizens while simultaneously working to erase their contributions. To reclaim Samson's place in history is to reclaim the truth about how innovation actually works, not as the singular achievement of a few celebrated names, but as a collective journey where overlooked pioneers like Henry Samson carried humanity forward. The next time you hold a cell phone in your hand, consider not just the company logo on its back, but the forgotten genius whose invention decades ago made such a miracle possible.